How'd your week go? Um, it was okay. In what way? I mean, tell um, me how you're feeling about it. Well, I went to a wedding Saturday night, and I drank a lot. So you, you oh. I had 10 beers. Okay, so. I haven't drank in like, what, six, five, six years? Did you go to AA? No. Okay, I so you cold turkey. You basically realized that drinking was a problem and it's over. Yeah. So this and was the first time I you drink. Was your husband started. was your husband with you? Yeah, he I would only do that if he was with me. Okay. Like, I wouldn't do it in any other and setting. So you weren't it's not like you were in hiding, which is great. No. So there's some great things that you're telling me right now, even though it's like, you know, there's some situations here that make me feel a little better about it. Yeah. Anyway. So I mean I guess I shouldn't say I haven't drank in five or six years. It's like, you but I haven't excessively drank like I did on Saturday night. Well, what was the intention behind it? Fun? Oh my gosh, I had a blast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but was there something prior to that? How did you formulate the decision? It was free. <laughs> So it, was it was at a wedding. It was at one of my coworkers' wedding, and I was just like, I'm gonna let my hair down tonight, and I'm gonna have a blast. Because I knew my husband was not drinking, so I'm like, I'm just gonna go all out and just. What would have been different, like a month ago? Is it because you're not eating as much? No. So did it shift from one way to give yourself? Did you eat too with yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Kind of like no restraint at yeah, all. I just kind of like let loose and had a good time. And I'm always very structured, and I just really just don't let loose. Yeah, because of you're afraid. You can't handle it. So there's so, no middle. It's going to either be extremism on one side or extremism on the other. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, this all stems from severe judgment. Major judgment. How much were you criticized growing up? A lot. Constantly, right? Mm -hmm. So constantly being judged. And and that's what this comes from. You know? When you're constantly being judged, you, you can't let yourself be real. You can't be unique. So you have to find structure. You have to find what's, what will make you feel safe from judgment, right? So you've changed, you've altered your, who you were from the moment you were born. Because mm -hmm. you've been criticized your entire life. So, you know, the way you're re responding is not surprising. You're not alone. I know. But I did have a good time. Oh, good. That's great. We just have to look at on some level. I mean, were you hungover the next day? Um, yes, but I took four aspirin and I was fine. Yeah. So I every time hungry. you want to have... Every time you want, here's what we've got to remember. Every time you say, you think, I need to let loose, there's usually something negative that precedes it. Like you're feeling dull, you're feeling down, you're feeling like, screw it. There's always a negative feeling that precedes that type of pendulum swing to the opposite side. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're, you know, the voice of, I'm always so rigid, I'm always so, do you really like that? No. Well, then why do you do it? Well, it comes down to the fact that you feel like you have to have some level of control, otherwise you're a piece of shit. So you have to have some definition <coughs> of value. So you have to do this. You have to make your bed a certain way. You have to prepare your food a certain way. I mean, you have to have, there's this level, layers of perfection that have to be done in order for you not to have criticism. You're criticizing yourself now. I mean, you right, took what right. your parents taught you, believed that you suck, and you continue to criticize yourself unless you meet these specific expectations. So you create all these crazy expectations based on the idea that you suck, and then eventually they wear you down. And if you can't meet them, you're gonna not meet anything. Mm -hmm. This is very, very predictable. You're not alone. You're actually quite normal under those circumstances. Everybody who's grown up with severe restriction and criticism has an addiction. It's the outcome. That's what happens. So don't beat yourself up. I wasn't. It's just I gained a lot. Well, what do you think? <laughs> you mutilate the body for the mind's so need I to was, read. I was shocked. Why? How much, how much I gained just on those, like... 
Why? From drinking Look alcohol. at the outcome of your body. Why are you continually shocked that your body manifests obesity because you binge? I know. The problem isn't your body. We, you know that. I know that. So you need to be okay with your body. You need to get to the point. Oh no, I'm totally fine with my mm-hmm. body at this point, but I was just shocked that drinking 10 beers would make me gain that much weight. Well, you know how much leptin your body creates, right? Which is way more than um, someone who's got, you know, 100 pounds less fat. I just never put two and two together. I know. I'm so glad you had that experience. And it was fun. <laughs> well, the fun part, but how fun is it to mutilate your body? No, that part's not fun. But it's just like, wow. Like, oh, So I was sitting back thinking, and I was like, I'm truly, like, either an alcoholic or a food addict or you I'm have low self-esteem something those are just the ways that you try to feel better about your low self-esteem you can call yourself and define yourself as anything you're really not you just have really really low self-worth okay I would yes that's very true I know worth is very true correct and because your worth has to be defined you need someone to tell you where what you need to do like your parents told you you were a pile of crap you suck you suck you're criti- they're critical with you right so you're you to feel any sense of love you think you have to meet some standard mm-hmm. and you do it to yourself that's what you were taught to do and that type of standard is so uh, it, you become the standard you because that standard defines your value. You know, it was like me and the religion. I was the religion. If I didn't follow their guidelines, I was a pile of crap. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I had this idea that I was highly criticized based on this extremism, right? And your mm-hmm. parents were extremes. So therefore, you basically perpetuated the psychological abuse. It's, it's like... You know, you don't, you're not, you know, molesting people, but you're molesting yourself emotionally. You're no longer, you know, passing the criticism down. Unless you're criticizing your husband on that level, then he's it. So then it's really, you're keeping it here inside of yourself so that you don't do it to someone else. And the whole time, you're you're killing yourself. It's like a slow suicide. You're committing suicide. You know, mm-hmm. so and one of the ways you're feeling better about it is because it was fun. It was, it was, yes, hell yeah, it's fun. Are you kidding me? When I would binge, I would feel so much release from all that restriction, but then there's always that incredible amount of shame and guilt that goes along with this. And then I was relying on exercise to get rid of that, so that was fun too. And I always felt empowered by doing two hours of exercise, it was really fun, and I felt better about myself. My legs looked better too. It's always a great excuse. You need to pull out and think from a rational place. You're perpetuating. You're defined. And we, t- you know, when I, you gotta find. Um, you gotta let go of all this control. And your desire to binge on so many levels, not binge drink and binge eat, and let go of any restraint, is emotional. Because intellectually. Did you did you need ten beers? No. Did you need to have fun? Was fun in the beer? Was fun in the buzz? You let, fun is in the fact that you no longer have restraint, and that's a compensation for all of the criticism you're giving yourself. All of a sudden, you're not criticizing yourself when you're drunk. You actually like yourself. Mm-hmm. So you think more is better because if you have more beer, more buzz, then you're going to like, you are now feeling like you like yourself because there's no more criticism. But the problem isn't the beer. The problem isn't the food that you use freely. It's all of the criticism. And that's, that's where we've got to, those walls have to come crashing down. Who are you if you don't have all that crazy control? And that's what I have no idea. Well, well, if you want to find out, the only way to do it is to start over. And to jump off the thing. Yeah, 
What? Well, let's let's try to identify where you're controlling, because there's certain things that you do. What do you mean? Like in your daily day day to day life. It's my whole life. Like it's twenty four seven. Like what time you wake up, what you wear, how you do your hair, yes. how you put your makeup. You are per, a. That's per- a routine every single day. And all of it has to be done perfectly, otherwise or you I feel. Or I freak out. Okay. So like last night, because normally, so we did that. Give kids a smile today. And I make bags for every single little kid with their name printed on it, like cut out in all just crafty stuff. just makes my stuff. heart sing right now. Just like, oh. All crafty so stuff. Sweet. So it has like toothbrushes, toothpaste, floss, whatever mm-hmm. inside the bag. And then I put like a little label that I hand make. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not part of my routine. So last night I'm sitting here doing this because it was today and I'm freaking out at my husband. Because I'm like, oh, I gotta get this stuff up. I go to bed at nine o'clock every day. Nine o'clock, not on the weekends, but Monday through Friday, I go to bed at nine. Or Monday through Thursday, I go to bed at nine a.m. or nine p.m. So last night I was up until eleven thirty because I'm trying to get these bags pissed, done. bitchy, and punished. Pissed. And you understand what you did for some children today. And everybody made comments about the bags. Well, I want you to think about those children. And I do, but... No, you didn't. No, I... You didn't. I do. You didn't. It was really about your fucked up schedule. But I did it because I love the kids. But it wasn't worth it because it messed with your schedule. No, it was worth it. I know that. I know that, but I'm trying to get you back to the moment. Last night, we need to pull you back there. You felt punished because you couldn't go to bed at 9 o'clock. How does that make you feel? Think about it. Like an AS? Yeah. Like your parents? Like your mom and dad? Mm-hmm. Well, why are you manifesting them? It doesn't make sense. You don't like that. It's not you. You're behaving like someone you don't like. You don't like that. So why are you continuing to act like your own parents? Well, it's because that's what you were taught. That that's what made you valuable. When do you decide that you are no longer going to control your life? Don't set a bedtime. Oh my gosh, that would freak me out. Well, one why? Because your parents told you if you didn't go to bed by a certain time, they were mad at you. They were pissed at you, angry at you. The dogs have a routine. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with routine, but you've emotionalized that routine as if if you don't do that right, it's you're it's killing you. It's all fake too. That's not really who you are. It's fake. You couldn't even really enjoy what you were doing and put real love and attention into that detail because you were pissed and being. You were acting like your parents last night, and it didn't match what you truly believe. When you say to me, Robin, I do love that. Robin, I do. I know you do. But there's the extremist side of it that came out last night. Because in order for you to put that love and attention into this, it had to be within these crazy, crazy strict boundaries. And if you couldn't get it done, you suck. And, I and if get it you done. suck, it's your father. If you're, it's your, it's your husband's fault. He's an ass, right? Well, and I didn't get it done. I just got the girls done. I didn't get any of the How boys done. How did that done. feel? Like, like you suck. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. What? Why would you? Would you criticize anybody else like that or to that standard? If you had a friend sitting there, and, or you had a child who was, I gotta go to bed at nine o'clock. I gotta go to bed at nine o'clock. I gotta get this done. You'd be like, take a chill pill, right? Mm-hmm. I know. You need to take a step back and look at how you're you're continuing the family cycle. You don't have to do it anymore. You know, your personality is just it's so uh you are a caretaker. Oh, totally. And there's that is such a beautiful thing. So this type of like self hatred is the opposite of your true soul. Well, and I did that. Um, so no wonder you feel. I'm sorry to. No. No wonder you feel so jailed up by it. Mm-hmm. No wonder you want to go get wasted. It's because you're living to this standard that your parents created that is not healthy for your type of like energy. 
Can you see why you go to that other extreme? Because it's it's like your parents are still punishing you. Still. For not going to bed at 9 o'clock. And that's when, you, that's when there's lack of love. It's going away. I don't go to bed. So you, what happens is you get this biochemical response. You literally get irritable because there's a response when you perceive something not perfect. So it's the perception of lack of perfection, right? So it can be a, perceived with time to go to bed, how you fold the laundry, um, how you clean the hand handles. Does that make well, sense? It, well, it does make sense, and it's funny because it's just certain things. To certain things. It's not yeah. with everything. No. Okay, well, those certain things may be the things that you thought gave you safety. Were those things something your parents thought were valuable? I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, we have a very lived-in house. It's mm -hmm. not dirty, you know, but it's very lived-in. It's mm -hmm. like you can tell someone's living here. Isn't that great? Well, and I guess our house was kind of like that like growing up but I don't like it it makes my world crazy because you want it to feel different I want it to be more organized like if I need a stapler I want to know where the stapler is okay there's nothing wrong with that but why do you emotionalize that as if it's going to make or break your value as a person or the day I don't know that's the part it's like there's nothing wrong with anything you're saying like, I like to go to bed at the same time, too. But if I don't get to go to bed at the same time, it doesn't make me an angry person. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. If I can't find the stapler, it's frustrating, but it doesn't make me an angry person. Does that make sense? Whereas mm -hmm. your parents But this has been going on people. for a long time. Like, I even remember, like, my closet is color-coordinated, and it's mm -hmm. all in a certain order and mm -hmm. protected. Well, this is all because your parents were perfectionists in an extreme way. Well, they yeah. were. The way they criticized you was expecting okay. you to be perfect. Because they were beyond that. Cra they were crazy. And they and how much they criticized you is, in a sense, saying you have to be perfect. And if you're not, you're going to get a criticism. But I even remember, like, having one of my ex-boyfriends hang up a shirt and he hung it up backwards and I freaked. But now... It, that doesn't bother me as much. Well, that's that great. Just, well, is that because I moved it on to something else? Probably. Okay. Probably, and it all stems from the same problem. You just never resolved it, which is you were taught that you suck and you need to fix it, and the only way to fix it is to be perfect because there's always going to be, always going to be criticism. You could do something perfect and someone will find a way to criticize you, right? Mm -hmm. Still will continue on some level. Mm -hmm. It will still continue. So you are still under the chains of your own parents. You need to start over. You really need to let go of some of the stuff that you think gives you emotional stability on purpose. And that's 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 the jumping off the cliff. Well, it's like saying, so here's the thing. You're getting this biochemical but response that creates fear and anguish. What I have to This is the simplest this is a simple way to think of it. The stuff like your closet, go and jumble the whole thing up. Make the clothes all over the place. Okay? Intentionally do something to make you feel like vulnerable. Um, it'd be like the same thing with the food. Go put all the candy out that you think that gives you happiness, put it on the table and choose not to eat it. You're kind of pulling your, you're changing the wiring in the brain. You so know, like the scale thing. You yes. have it out, but don't. Yes. You're changing the wiring. You're changing the, you know, your perception is what's creating a problem. You perceive that without perfection that you suck and you're going to get criticism and you criticize yourself. So you feel like your life is sucky, mm -hmm. right? You know, and so the perception is what's the wrong thing. But you, so you, once you recognize that you're perceiving the world from this harshly judgmental way, which you don't like, right? It's not matching your real personality, is it? You know, that's why I'm like, you're such a character. Well, that's so, what I was going to say. I did this personality test and these five characteristics came up about myself and I looked at it and I'm like, that's not me. But deep down, I think it really is me. It is you. I'm telling you right now, you are, But like, listen I'm, to like, your phone message. No, stop. No, go on. I'm not kidding. That's you. That's not your parents. I want you to get in touch with this person because you know she exists. 
and you know how much she loves and cares yes. and wants to be you know what I mean but the problem is you're trying to live in this like a knife mm -hmm. and you are not a knife you're like a piece of dough that's gooey and ooey and lovey and, and you never would want to inflict harm on anybody well one of the characters this was empathy uh huh. That's what that and is. And I'm like, no, I'm not like that. Bull crap. And that everybody says that to me. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Like. Yeah, you are identifying with your parents' side. You know, it's like you got to be able to kind of look at this and kind of separate the raw, the reality of yourself from what you were taught. And what you were taught creates a biochemical response. Now you need to listen to me right now. So every time you know you want to do something and you need perfection because if you didn't have perfection you're gonna get criticized right so you want a certain standard and what happens when it doesn't happen right is your body reacts as if you just got whiplashed or whipped and you actually feel as if you're being criticized like Pavlov's dog so you get the physical manifestation of sorrow sadness anxiety and um, <coughs> you're being um, rejected and it's real okay. physically however intellectually you need to be able to sit with it and know that this is a real reaction as if I've been trained to feel bad about lack of perfection okay? so can I ask you a question yes okay tomorrow night I'm having a open house for my part-time business right I've already warned my husband that I'm going to be super crabby, so just to lay off. So now, how am I supposed to make tomorrow night perfect? Not perfect. Okay. <laughs> like, I like I don't know how to not do that. Okay, so the crabbiness that you're anticipating is because it's not going to be controlled. There's certain things when you have people over, you can't well, control their I behavior. I just need to make sure it's perfect before everybody gets there. But now, define the perfect on a piece of paper for yourself. Define okay. it. Like, what's the bullet list of things that you want to get done? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can so do start that. there. That's easy, okay. right? Yep. And then recognize when one of those things is not happening the way you thought and observe your response. So I, you need to be the scientist tomorrow night. You are can not. You just tell me. <laughs> no, I cannot do this for you. <laughs> this is the biggest mistake. I cannot do it I for mean, you. I know. I know. You I know. have to do it. And all I'm going to tell you is this recognize the biochemical response. That if you think there's something that needs to be done, it, if it doesn't get done that way, you're going to feel as if your parents are criticizing you. Well, and I was, you know, I'm going to have food laid out and everything, and I'm like, I'm stressing out about this food, and I'm like, all right, what? I'm calling a caterer. <laughs> so, and that's huge on me, because I'm not... You're letting go of control. I'm letting go of something oh, that perfect. I normally would never let go of. Well, you need to let go. And, and recognize that no one is criticizing you to the level that you are. Like and part of it is that you need that. to let it, part of this is you need to let this like suck on some level so that you recognize how much people love you. Well, and I'm having people over that have never been to the house before. Oh, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have every bedroom perfect. Nope, I have don't do it. Have. Don't do it. So make your list, but don't do it. Yeah, right. No, I'm telling you right now. Can you want to end this right of, now? Can I do part of the list? Do it halfway. And because you want... This is the thing that you've never done. You've never exposed yourself and to find out if you're not going to get criticized. What happens if... So can I tell you what I was going to do? I was going to rearrange the spare bedroom because I don't like the way it's laid out right now. Okay, so you've created all of this work for yourself and no wonder you're getting overwhelmed. So I will rearrange the spare bedroom. Mm -mm. No, because you want people to know what's real. Don't be fake. You're being fake so that you don't have that feeling of rejection that you were taught oh. to feel every time your parents rejected you. I mean, that this is all just stem. hit something. That just, that right there, what you just said, made complete sense to me. Okay, I knew there had to be because something. Because <laughs> I totally have such a huge thing of rejection, and that's what it is. If my house isn't perfect, that's I what I keep people on are going to reject me. Oh, yeah, or they'll criticize you. That's I know, you probably have said it about a hundred times before, but that right there just hit. Yeah, I was using the word criticism, mm -hmm. but it's rejection, that they're oh, judging you, yeah. and if they judge you the way that you think they are, mm -hmm. 
Do you really want to attract them into your life? Right. So why would you change what you're doing to attract people who are critical? If you are the way you are, the people who like you, no matter what, will be attracted to you. The people who expect you to change for them won't be attracted to you. And that's the energy you do not want. Right. So if you change so that you can accommodate people who are judgmental, you are attracting judgmental people to you. Right. And this is where the vulnerability comes in. Mm -hmm. And this is a moment. This it's is a huge, cliff. Yeah. That's why I'm like, make your list and recognize how crazy it is. Because you're doing something as if your mom and dad are going to come over. Mm -hmm. Right? And it stems from yeah. that. That's why I keep yeah. on bringing them up. Even though you kind of have that detachment from them, right. I want you to make sense of why you react mm -hmm. this way in life. And it's because you were taught to react out of fear. Mm -hmm. Because you were going to be so criticized that you had to do all this stuff. And you, it always ended up in criticism. So why would you even do it anyways? So let's get real. Let go of your grip. And I love hosting. You know, I love yeah. having people over. And I love, you know. So vacuum the floors, clean the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, um, clean the bathrooms. Tidy up. Tidy up. Do not do anything other than that. And be okay with you are going to feel vulnerable. I know. And you want it. You want to be like, you know what, bring it on. This is this you're gonna is have a breakdown. My, you're not gonna have a breakdown. The <laughs> breakdown is when you freak out because it's not controlled and you feel that, you know like this is awful because it's not perfect. It's not the way you wanted it. That's the breakdown. You're gonna when this is over, let yourself experience something new. This is what I mean when I'm saying you have biochemical reactions that tell you to do this. When you don't do it, all of a sudden you're gonna create a new neural pathway. It's like detraining the dog. Mm -hmm. Something can be trained, it can be detrained. And we're trying to detrain your reaction. You're gonna be more proactive, knowing what we know, so you're not gonna do everything perfect on the list intentionally. You're gonna go halfway. When you go to someone else's house, honestly, how would you feel if someone changed everything so that you wouldn't criticize them? It goes against your nature. Well, and it's funny because I have this one friend that she doesn't care what her house looks like when people come over. And you shouldn't criticize her for that. However, you know, you create your own standard, don't well, you? Well, no, no, no. I, and I understand, but it's just like, it's so freeing. Like, I wish I could just be like, oh, they're staying around the bathroom okay. floor. You know? Like, I just I'm want like, you to know that that reaction you just had tells me right now. You are not what you think you are. That reaction to that house tells me that you are so caring, so loving, unconditional. You were brought up by people who were so opposite. Oh, that's so true. I know. That is so true. And you were self-inflicting them in your head, mm -hmm. but wanting to live authentically on the other side. Mm -hmm. No wonder it feels so good to go there. Because you know she's not judging you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you come in here? Great. <laughs> Similar. You're afraid of reality that I'm about to shove in your face, know. but it's I'm you know I'm you. not judging you. You <laughs> no. know I don't care what you're wearing. I mean, my God, look look at me. Look you're at me today. So cute. Well, crap. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but my effort today was like I wrote this blog this morning and mm -hmm. I had 10 minutes to get to the clinic. Did nothing but brush my teeth and put mascara on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. But the fact that I'm I'm myself with you, I am so myself. And I think... Isn't that refreshing? It is very refreshing, but I think, you know, being a bigger person, and it's such a huge stereotype. If I just came in not being all done up, not you in general, but going out in public, people just assume that we're lazy because... That's true. We have a baseball hat on, and... Oh, yeah, and they think you're binging all the time, oh, which isn't the, isn't true either. And people looking in my cart when I go grocery shopping. I'm like, that oh. is you, because no one really cares, except for the crazies who are extremist assholes. Do you really care about your extremist assholes? No. So then those are the people... I want them to look at my cart because I've got all good food in there. <laughs> <laughs> and they, ahead, still, they still think you're hiding in the closet and binging. So it doesn't matter. You can't win with extremists. You'll never win. Why would you want to attract that? I don't. Well, every time you try to accommodate to those type of people, you're attracting them in your life. 
because you are manipulatable. You're manipulative. Whatever. That's a new word. So <laughs> that was a <laughs> you're you're easy to manipulate. I am very. Mm-hmm. Because you 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 want them to Everybody love you as much me. as you love them. Everybody. Correct. Have we made some headway? Yes. Okay, I'm going to turn this off so we can continue. Okay. Can I tell everybody your name? No. Okay. Well, you can tell them my first name. That way, if they want to follow you in particular, yeah. they know who who this person is. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then you can but always go back. But don't give them my email address or phone number <laughs> my address. <laughs> All right, this is Kelly. Uh, she's who I had the phone interview with, so... You were kicking butt, Kelly, seriously.